next important part or the area in bacterial cell is cytoplasm it is present internal to cytoplasmic membrane so cytoplasmic membranes the interior part of the bacterial cell and that internal part the core part is called as cytoplasm cytoplasm is a watery substance in which the aqueous environment is present that means there is presence of water and in that water watery substance there is a solution solution means it is a mixture of several molecules or compounds cytoplasm also contains different types of cellular components like rna dna the carbohydrate contain vacuoles ribosomes and other type of accessory inclusion bodies so whatever the things which are present in cytoplasm will call them as the inclusion bodies so now we'll study what are the different types of inclusions which are present in bacterial cell cytoplasm so the first in that is ribosomes so all eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells they contain ribosomes and these ribosomes as we have studied already are functioning as the site of protein synthesis cytoplasm of a bacterial cell it contains approximately 10000 ribosomes and these ribosomes are freely present in this water solution of cytoplasm so presence of ribosomes in high number gives this cytoplasm a granular appearance so it appears granular due to the presence of ribosomes in case of bacterial cell there are no compartmentations so all the ribosomes which are of 70s type are present only in cytoplasm the composition of cytoplasm is all the inclusion bodies and in those inclusion bodies it includes nucleoid that is the bacterial dna ribosomes metachromatic granules or volutin granules then magnetosomes then gas vesicles or gas vacuoles carboxysomes so all these different types of inclusions may or may not be present in bacterial cell but there are certain there are certain inclusions which are compulsory present in bacterial cell and these are ribosomes and nucleoid that is the dna now ribosomes consist of protein and one type of rna that rna is called as ribosomal rna so the rna which is present in ribosome it is called as ribosomal rna which has a specific function of binding to mrna now these prokaryotic ribosomes are of 70s type of ribosomes s stands for swedberg's unit which is a measure of sedimentation coefficient means the rate at which these ribosomes sediment after exposing to centrifugal force so that unit is called as swedberg's unit the sedimentation coefficient so it is based on its molecular weight and molecular size 
this 70s type of ribosome it is made up of two subunits and these two subunits are further divided into different components or more and more subunits we are not going into the details of those so initially 70s type of ribosome it consists of two subunits the smaller one is called as 30s the larger one is called as 50s so 30s subunit containing one molecule of rrna and the larger one 50s it is containing two molecules of rrna so this 50s and 30s they combine with each other to form 70s remember that it is not the sum of 50 plus 30 equal to 70 no it is sedimentation coefficient so 50 plus 30 is not 70s so there is no logic of any kind of addition here 30s is the rate of sedimentation of these subunits this is the rate of sedimentation of these subunits 50s and 30s so these two combine with each other this is 30s that is the smaller subunit and which combines with the larger subunit that is 50s and whenever there is protein synthesis this mrna it binds here and this ribosome it uh, it moves over that mrna so this is the composition of 70s type of ribosome 30s and 50s now the function of ribosomes ribosome is called as a site for protein synthesis so we have already learned about the two stages in protein synthesis the first one is transcription in which one of the strands of dna is copied and the nucleotide sequence is copied in the form of messenger rna and this messenger rna is formed by rna polymerase enzyme so one of the strands of dna it acts as a template and using that a complementary strand is produced by m rna polymerase enzyme and that complementary strand is called as messenger rna that is mrna so all these events happen only in cytoplasm because in bacterial cell there are absence of compartmentations so all these events happen in cytoplasm itself then this mrna this mrna it binds to the next step is mrna binding to ribosome that is 70s type of ribosome so this is mrna so we can see that this mrna has uh, these marks here so these are nothing but the nucleotides and these three nucleotides makes one codon so this these three nucleotides principally the nitrogenous bases which are present in these three nucleotides it makes one codon so we can say that each codon is made up with three nitrogenous bases and these three nitrogenous bases which forms one codon are responsible for the addition of amino acids so in brief this is the mrna that further binds to this ribosome this is 
smaller subunit and this is the larger subunit so this mrna it binds to ribosome and this binding is through rrna so the function of rrna is it helps in the binding of mrna to ribosomes that is the role of rrna then how it begins this is the process of translation this is all process of translation so mrna is synthesized it will bind to ribosome then the important component required for translation is the unit a type of rna it is trna t stands for transfer we can see trna it consists of nucleotide and there are terminal three nitrogenous bases three nitrogenous bases which will be acting as anti codons so here we have codons on mrna which are three and here on trna we have three nitrogenous so there are many but three are acting three nitrogenous bases are acting as anti codons so here we have codons here we have anti codons so anti codons are present on trna and these anti codons are highly specific and they are holding a an amino acid on their top so specific amino acid out of 20 different amino acids is present on a specific type of trna carrying specific type of composition of nitrogenous bases that is anti codons so in all there are so this is triplet there are 61 different types of uh, anti codons or there are 61 different types of trna which are present and which are responsible for carrying 20 different types of amino acids three types of anti codons are not responsible for carrying uh, any type of amino acid so these types of trnas are present in thousands so whatever the composition of codon is there a complementary the trna which is having a complementary nitrogenous bases that means here it is codon here it will be a complementary anti codon so whatever the suitable anti codon is there that type of trna will come and it will bind here and then this ribosome it moves in this direction so this is how it happens we can see here that this uh, ribosome is moving and this is the earlier trna this earlier trna has bound to this mrna this is codon anti codon and this is the amino acid which it is carrying these are the amino acids which have been previously added by these binding of trnas here now how it happens this is growing polypeptide chain in which we can see these balls are nothing but amino acids so this trna complementary to this codon it will come and it will bind here then the next reaction is the transfer of this amino acid to this new amino acid which is bound to new trna so this whole chain it will be transferred to this so that uh, this will bind here and this will come at this position and this trna will leave and this is how this ribosome it will move in this direction so this is how this is uh, called as ribo 
nucleosome in which there is nucleic acid and there is ribosome so this is how ribosomes acts as a site for synthesis of a peptide chain later on uh, after at the end this tRNA will separate and this whole all peptide chain it will be released and it will be further processed to form primary structure secondary structure tertiary structure or likewise the next is the nuclear area present in bacterial cell it is called as nucleoid nucleoid is covalently closed double stranded dna which is present in the cytoplasm so this is nucleoid and this is also called as bacterial cell chromosome so we know that bacterial cell contains only one chromosome so the chromosome number in bacteria is only one so this is nucleoid which is covalently closed ribbon like structure covalently closed means it does not have free ends in case of eukaryotic cell the dna has free ends but in prokaryotic cell this dna does not have free ends so this is double stranded covalently closed dna and this contains the segments of dna and these segments of dna which codes for protein are called as genes so genes are the segments of dna which are present in this nucleotide and these genes are responsible for synthesis of enzymes these genes are responsible for synthesis of different peptides proteins which are important in the formation of several cellular components these genes are responsible for controlling all the activities of the cell so that is the function of nucleoid it controls all the activities of the cell directly or indirectly about the structure of dna we have already learned in biochemistry biomolecules chapter then apart from this chromosomal dna some bacteria means it is not compulsory that all bacteria will have this condition some bacteria may contain additional covalently closed circular dna molecule we can see the difference between this and this the difference is obvious the molecular weight so these are low molecular weight their size is very less as compared to this chromosomal dna but these are extra chromosomal that means these are present extra to this chromosome therefore they are called as extra chromosomal dna and this extra chromosomal dna it is called as this extra chromosomal dna it is called as, as plasmids okay extra chromosomal dna which is present in bacterial cell is called as plasmid we can see the differences between chromosomal dna and plasmid remember that plasmid may be present may not be present in bacterial cell but if it is present then this bacterial cell will get an extra advantage or it will be having some extra properties extra ability other than bacteria other bacteria so the differences are they are low molecular weight chromosomal dna is high molecular weight the size is more as compared to plasmid second difference is that the number you can see the number here in diagram it is shown that there are three it may be up to 20 to 25 in number here the chromosomal dna is single so the number of 
copies of plasmid DNA, it is more than one. So that is the difference between chromosomal DNA. Function wise, these are responsible for some extra functions and chromosomal DNA is responsible for general functions of cell. That means it controls the metabolic activities of cell. So what are these extra functions which are carried out by plasmids? These are, so plasmid is double stranded covalently closed DNA which is of small size. Now these plasmids have one more property which is different from this chromosomal DNA and that property is it is called as auto replication it is called as auto replication so auto replication means what replication means to make exact copy of itself so this synthesis of exact copy of itself it is possible in case of plasmids therefore we can see that the number of plasmids in the cell is more than one the important thing here we can note that the replication of this plasmid is on its own and that is why it is called as auto because the replication of plasmid is not dependent on replication of chromosome. The time of replication of bacterial chromosome is at the time of binary fission when one cell gets divided into two. So that is the time of replication of chromosomal DNA. But there is no time of replication of plasmid DNA, it can replicate on its own, it can keep on synthesizing its copies whereas the bacterial chromosome it remains unreplicated. Therefore it is called as auto replication. So that is a very important property of bacterial plasmid and therefore these two properties that one is low molecular weight and because of its low molecular weight these plasmids can be transferred from one bacterial cell to another bacterial cell. So these plasmids are transferable and second property is auto replication. It can replicate on its own. So these two properties are very important in one engineering process and that engineering process is called as recombinant DNA technology. So recombinant DNA technology is the technology in which plasmids are used to carry foreign genes. You can go back and see the use of plasmids under biotechnology which we have already studied in last semester. So plasmids are very important in genetic engineering technology. So that is the one application of plasmid that they are very important in uh, genetic engineering technology. What are these plasmids then? These are the double stranded DNA that means it contains genes. Plasmids are containing genes. So about 5 to 100 genes are generally present in one plasmid. So what are these genes which are present in the plasmids? These genes are responsible for extra activities. These extra abilities or activities are if a bacterial cell contains this plasmid, they show resistance to antibiotics. 
that means they are not able these bacterial cells are not destroyed by antibiotic if they contain plasmin so it is called as antibiotic resistant that is the additional property if bacterial cell contains plasmids then they are not destroyed by toxic metals so tolerance to toxic metals that is the extra ability which is attributed to which is gained by bacterial cells due to the presence of these plasmids due to the presence of extra genes in this plasmid these bacterial cells can produce toxins and these toxins may be responsible for causing damage to plant cell or animal cells so because of presence of plasmids these bacteria may produce toxins then because of presence of these plasmids these bacteria produce certain accessory enzymes some extra enzymes which are not being produced by chromosomal dna genes so that is the extra ability that it can produce certain excess enzymes which are responsible for degradation of complex materials like hydrocarbons like oils petroleum products different types of pollutants toxic chemicals etc etc so these are the functions of plasmids and these are the differences between chromosomal dna and plasmid dna so i had stated earlier that these plasmids can be transferred from one bacterium to another in fact plasmid dna is used for gene manipulation that is genetic engineering in biotechnology